Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe and you'll have less family drama. Maybe. Today we're looking at the King of Wakanda, T'Challa, better known as Black Panther. Created by Stanley and Jack Kirby in 1966, T'Challa is one of the first major black superheroes and a staple of the Marvel Universe, joining up with the Avengers and the Illuminati. With a plethora of panther powers, it's no wonder he's poised at such a prestigious position. Everybody wants to be a cat. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, Vibranium makes him ridiculously hard to hit, so we'll do our best to duplicate those effects. Next, we'll make sure he can do some serious damage with unarmed attacks. Finally, we'll make him an inspiring king, ready to lead his people. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll if you want, shouldn't be a problem for this build. Dexterity is number one. It affects our damage, accuracy, and armor, so make sure it's high. Wisdom after that, the power of the Black Panther grants him superhuman senses, along with superhuman and everything else. Charisma will follow. T'Challa is a king and a pretty popular one. Intelligence next. I'd actually like these next three skills to be higher. We just don't really need them for the build. Constitution after that, I just hate dumping it and will dump strength. Instead, I know he's super strong, but we can mitigate this later. I'm tempted to say that Black Panther should be a tabaxi, but since he isn't a literal cat, we'll stick with a variant human. Take the athlete feat. This gives you plus one dexterity. You can stand up from prone with only five feet of movement, and climbing doesn't cost you any extra movement, and you can jump with only five feet of run up instead of the usual 10. Bump up your dexterity even more and your wisdom with your two free skill points. Take perception for your skill of choice in any language you want. T'Challa is a noble, so history and persuasion skills are free, and you can get an audience with other nobles thanks to the position of privilege. For our first level, we'll go with Monk. That'll give us two skills of our choice from their list. Athletics and acrobatics are useful. You also get unarmored defenses. This is what we're calling the uber-thin super vibranium armor. Makes your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier, so at level 1 that's 15, and that's really good for level 1. You also get martial arts, which gives you proficiency with monk weapons. And remember the Bog Naga from the Wolverine video, shameless plug, they're sharp, claw-like weapons. These will deal 1d4 for now using your dex modifier, and you can make unarmed attacks as a bonus action after using them. For second level, we'll dip into Rogue. This gives us an extra skill from their list, take Stealth. You also get expertise on two skills. Acrobatics will help you do sweet flips, and Athletics will pretty much cover you for Strength. Since it's the only ability tied to Strength, you can probably convince your DM any Strength check is an Athletics check. You're just not great at Saves. Finally, you get Sneak Attack, letting you deal an extra d6 damage when you have advantage, or when there's an ally within 5 feet of your enemy that you're targeting. Vibranium claws are great for passing through defenses. Right back to Monk. Second level monks get key points. Spend one of these to make a flurry of blows for two unarmed attacks as a bonus action instead of one. Step of the Wind lets you dash as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance, or you can also use Patient Defense, which lets you dodge as a bonus action. You also get unarmored movement, and that's going to increase your movement speed by 10 while you're not wearing armor. This increases as you level up. At the third level of Monk, you can pick a Monastic Tradition. The Kensei Monk from Xanathar's Guide to Everything lets you sharpen those claws. First, you get Agile Parry, which lets you add 2 to your AC after you make an unarmed attack, as long as you have a Monk weapon in your hand. You can also make a ranged weapon a Monk weapon. It's not really in character, but if you want to break some rules, grab a longbow and make a Kensei shot. This lets you add 1d4 as a bonus action to a ranged attack by spending a key point. You can also deflect missiles, which lets you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your monk level plus your dexterity modifier. If you drop it to zero, you can throw that weapon back as a reaction. You're proficient with that attack and it counts as a monk weapon for damage, right now a d4. Most importantly though, you get the way of the brush, giving you proficiency with calligraphy so you can sign laws with style. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce fall damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. You also get an ability score improvement or a feat and will take the inspiring leader feat, which lets you bolster six creatures with a rousing 10 minutes speech. They get temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier plus your character level. If you can't come up with 10 minutes of words, just say Wakanda forever very slowly. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, meaning you can attack twice instead of once as an action and still use your bonus action for an unarmed attack or two with flurry of blows. If you want something else to spend a key point on, a stunning strike forces a constitution save of eight plus your wisdom modifier plus your proficiency bonus. Failing that, the target you hit is paralyzed until the end of your next turn. Fun fact, you have advantage to hit paralyzed targets and every hit you land is a crit if you're within five feet. So if you use stunning strike, you can follow it up with three crits, one of which gets your sneak attack damage and still get four crits against the target next round as well. Oh, and your martial arts die are now d6s instead of d4s. Stunning Strike can let you do some serious damage. Six level monks get key empowered strikes, meaning that your fists are magical in terms of overcoming resistances, as are your monk weapons, thanks to the magical Kensai weapons ability, but just call Vibranium. Kensai monks also get deft strikes at this level, which lets you spend a key point to add your martial arts die to damage of an attack once per round. Seventh level monks get evasion, meaning that you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successes, so 
don't worry about a fireball melting your state-of-the-art armor. You also get Stillness of Mind, letting you remove an effect of Charm or Frighten as an action, helping you govern properly. 8th level monks get an ability score improvement, and will round up Dex and Wisdom for a higher AC. Back to Rogue, at the second level of Rogue you get Cunning Action. This lets you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action, which makes you harder to pin down. 3rd level Rogues can take an Archetype. The Scout gives you the Skirmisher ability, meaning you can move up to half your movement as a reaction when a creature ends their turn within 5 feet of you without provoking opportunity attacks. There's also Survivalist, giving you not only proficiency with nature and survival, but expertise with them for free. Oh, and your sneak attack damage increases to 2d6. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement, cap off your dexterity for sharper claws and better AC. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage by half as a reaction as long as you can see the source of the damage. Your sneak attack also increases to 3d6, so you can really rip through armor. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Persuasion and Perception would be my picks, but if you're feeling stealth, go for it. 7th level rogues get nothing but improved sneak attack damage of 46, as evasion doesn't stack with the other evasion from monk. Sorry there's some double up, but hey, you're doing more damage. We took that level to get to the ability score improvement from rogue level 8. Pump up your wisdom, we want our AC to be as high as possible, but this also helps with your monk save DC and perception skills. We'll hop back to monk now, 9th level monks can run up walls and across liquids with improved unarmored movement. That's while moving of course, so make sure you get to the other side of the river before attempting this, cats hate water. 10th level monks get purity of body, granting you immunity to poison and disease so nobody can strip away the power of the Black Panther. 11th level Kensei monks can sharpen the blade, letting you spend up to 3 key points to increase your attack and damage rolls with a monk weapon as a bonus action. You get a bonus equal to the amount of points you spend and it lasts for up to a minute. Considering you're making 2 attacks per round, that adds up to a total of 30 damage for 3 key points, it's a good investment. Speaking of, these monk weapons are now D8s. Our capstone is an ability score improvement from 12th level of monk. Cap off your wisdom and set your AC to 20. That transitions us nicely into the positives of this build. The first is that you're hard to hit. 20 AC, evasion, uncanny dodge, and patient defense all combine to make you a pain to get damage on. While you're not taking that damage, you can also deal a considerable amount. With sharpened blades, extra attack, and stunning strike that guarantees your sneak attack damage, you can rip things up like tissue paper, and it doesn't matter if they resist physical damage because all your weapons are magical. Finally, in the event that someone actually can beat you, you've got plenty of disengagement options to get the heck out of there. As far as weaknesses go, your key points are a limited resource. If you spend three at the start of each fight, one to Stunning Strike, and another one on a flurry of blows, you can see how these go away pretty quickly. The next issue is your health, about 100 or slightly lower depending on how you roll. At level 20, I call that power word kill range, and there will be plenty of casters that can kill you within the first few rounds. Finally, a plethora of bonus actions is always good for variety, but you can only use one per turn, so you gotta pick and choose. But options are a good thing. Stay mobile. Don't get hit. Rip up the squishier targets. You've got the best gear in the world. Just make sure you notice when something has something beyond your world, otherwise they might leave you in the dust. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We've got three more Avengers coming out by Thursday, because Avengers Endgame comes out on Thursday, and I don't really know how to handle that.